All right. A uh, very uh, warm welcome to all of you joining us uh, for this weekly workshop. My name is Fabian. I'll be conducting today's workshop on behalf of Mishnah uh, while she's away uh, this week. Uh, so by way of uh, the primary topic for today, we're talking about project archiving. Uh, this was a feature that we had introduced uh, just a little over a year ago. And uh, we'll talk about uh, some of the key benefits of uh, working uh, with project archiving. Uh, we'll talk about the different ways you can archive a project. Uh, then we'll touch on some best practices and uh, we'll open up the floor to any uh, questions and answers. Uh, with every workshop, we do record the session and our marketing team at the uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours, we'll share a copy of this recording and we'll also publish it on our YouTube channel. Right. Uh, with that said, this is our last workshop for the month and uh, will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, we'll look to reconvene this uh, sometime later in the year, but uh, TBD on that. Uh, with that said, uh, for those joining us for the very first time, feel free to use the Q&A box to park any of your questions there. And then during the question and answer period, we'll get to those questions. Great. Uh, so with Project Archive, uh, the there are two distinct ways to archive projects. Uh, one, of course, is the automatic, and then we have the manual option. Um, and again, it is permission-driven, so if you're going to manually be selecting the ability to archive, we'll talk about the permission you're going to need in your access level to be able to execute that action. Uh, when we talk about automatic archiving, uh, so this is a feature where you have the ability to configure this through your company settings. And when you go into your company settings, you select your advanced settings under the accounting settings. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you have the option to auto archive projects. So if the application detects any inactivity on a specific project and you set the parameter to be maybe three months, six months, whatever the case may be, it will respect that parameter and automatically move the project from the activity center into the archive folder. Um, and we'll show you what that looks like. Our recommendation here, of course, is to keep this disabled because if you're not aware and your team is not conscious of this setting, uh, you are in all likelihood going to either recreate a project that is already in execution uh, just because there hasn't been any activity on it uh, and you don't see it in your activity center and it's residing in the archive folder, uh, there, the risks are greater. So the recommendation for now is have it disabled. Uh, don't enable auto archiving if you're absolutely sure um, that you want to execute this feature. With auto archive disabled at the moment, uh, we'll take a look again, staying at the company settings level. What are the specific um permissions that you're going to need. And uh, depending on your access level group, if you're a project manager, if I select this particular uh, bucket of permissions, I'm paying close attention to uh, where I am considered a project member of the project. I have the ability to not only archive the project, but also delete the project. Uh, so some very powerful permissions there, and this is the permission you're going to need, uh, be able to need in order for you to be able to manually archive these projects. Okay, uh, very, very important there. Now, when you are working through your activity center and you're looking at your activity center, it is essentially giving you all of your projects uh, minus your projects which are sitting in the draft status and in the status template, because that is controlled in a separate view. So when you go into your project status view, you are expanding on draft and template, completely separate statuses. You will never get to see these projects in the activity center, unless of course you apply this filter. When you select a specific project to be archived in an ideal state, it needs to be completed status, sorry, and I'm going to change that here to a completed status or closed status, which means you have done all of your checks and balances, all of your time entries have been posted, uh, all of the um, 
expenses have been invoiced. Uh, there's got to be a cadence and and a way to conform to ensure that, yes, okay, I have completed this project, it's closed, all the checks and balances are in place, and now I'm ready to take this closed project. If I don't have show completed projects enabled, uh, in this instance, we'll go ahead and we'll select the option to enable and visibly see completed projects. So there's that project, dry dock, paint, and hull repair. Uh, we now want to move it to the archive folder. And this is how we are manually moving it to the archive folder. So one option exists right here. Uh, if I expand on the project details and I click the ellipses icon, I have the exact same function available here as well. It just comes down to a personal preference. If you prefer executing it using the ellipses right from the activity center or going into this embedded view, uh, when you execute the archive function, you're not getting a warning. Rather, just at the bottom left corner of your screen, a little pop-up that that command has been executed. As a result, you are now going to see that project in an entirely separate folder. So in your header menu of your activity center from the uh, ellipses icon, you get to see all these different options. You're focusing your attention on show archive project. And this is where that project now lives. We don't compress the project. There is no compression. We're often asked, oh, if I archive my project, am I actually compressing uh, any of the data? Is it going to help me save on storage space? Uh, we are not executing any of those actions at the moment. We are just focused on decluttering your activity center by moving a closed project or a project that could not necessarily be enclosed, but you are you're essentially just want to move it. You want to park it somewhere else. And what's the best place to park? In this archive folder. Notice there's a project right below that says it's in the open status, and that's also available to you to archive. So we don't control, we don't warn you on what that status is. If you click on the archive function, we're just going to simply execute and move it here. If this was an inadvertent action, you did not. Uh, it, it was it was deliberate, uh, or it was it was not intended to be here. You always have the fail safe to come back here, uh, click on the ellipses icon, and unarchive it. When you unarchive it, it's going to go back into your activity center because we've just moved it from one location to the other, uh, and we're often asked the question here is that what happens to the data? What happens to all of those messages? What happens to all of those time entries? They are restored in the same way they went into the archive folder. It's the same way they come back out when you unarchive it. So any messages, any status changes, any of that stays resident. Of course, the when you go into the details and when you go into the audit trail and you pay close attention, uh, you are seeing the audit changes. Who made the audit change? When was it made? When was it executed? I.e., in this instance, we had this user archive the project. We had this user unarchive the project a minute ago. So the audit trail will capture those changes, but the rest of your project, your start date, your end date, none of that gets changed. None of that gets modified. It stays in that condition. Okay, very, very important. Uh, permissions we've already taken a look at. Next, we'll take a look how you could possibly consider filtering your projects and then executing the bulk archive option. So how do we get to the bulk archive? Uh, if I apply a filter and I choose to filter all projects that are currently in a specific folder. So I'm going to choose a portfolio um, and I'm going to say I want to archive all of my ERP projects. I identify those, sorry, my engineering ones. I've identified those uh, by applying that filter. I can now choose this multi-selector. So when you choose the multi-selector, uh, and in this instance, I'm going to choose all of the projects. So check the box for check all projects. And here we now see an option that says archive. So that's your bulk operation to archive all of these selections. Maybe here in, one, in, in this particular instance, although we filtered for all our engineering projects, I may still want to hang on to the repaint ALG project. I still want to continue to see that in my activity center, deselect that option, 
and now execute archive. So in one click, you have moved all of those projects from the activity center and they now reside in your archive folder. We're often asked the question here, can I bulk on archive? At the moment, you cannot bulk on archive. You cannot perform that same exact action that you did in the activity center. Uh, you have to uh, single select a specific project and then unarchive that project, right? So there's your bulk operation for managing um, archives, uh, the bulk archive action. Uh, when we talk about reporting, we're often asked is, can I include in my report archive projects as well? By default, they are not included. And that also applies to our Power BI reports. Unless, of course, you exclusively tell your customer success manager or you tell our support team that please make sure you do include archive projects in the reporting, then of course that will, precedent will be set on the back end as a back end filter. But if you don't, uh, you have the control to be able to do that. So when you get into your reports and you're building out a specific report, uh, we'll take a look at this uh, activity status report here. Uh, Sorry, I'll come up to this portfolio report. And in this portfolio report, I have the option here in this table view to include archive projects. So when I choose this function, the application now is going to take any projects sitting in the archive folder and also report on that information. It's not going to appear any different than it would. It's just your metrics that you are calculating are also going to be accounting for those archive projects. Uh, so this is using our report generator, uh, the native functionality. If you're talking about Power BI, Power BI, you have to specify but by default, it does not include archive projects, very similar to the fact that it will not include any projects in draft. It will not include any template folders unless, of course, you have specified that as part of your uh, report for business intelligence. And then lastly, when it comes down to a best practice that we have to offer, uh, because you have a completed status that typically would indicate I've closed my project or I've completed this project, everything's done. Uh, but we we see a lot of gain where the project manager sets up another custom, uh, another field, uh, status field in their workflow called completed and archived. So it becomes very evident uh, that this particular project uh, is, yes, it is completed, and we've also moved it to the archive folder. So if you don't already have a status similar to this included in your bucket of default workflows, uh, we do suggest uh, to add this um, particular status. You can rename it to whatever you want, what you're comfortable with, but it's a really good indicator to you uh, when you're reporting or when you need to uh, focus on a specific status, uh, this status can serve as uh, a predefined filter. And that is essentially it uh, when it comes to project archiving. I'm gonna go ahead and open the floor to any questions the team might have here. So I'll just take a quick look in our QA chat box. There's nothing there. All right. Uh, well, I trust that you found that information useful. If uh, you don't have any questions at the moment, uh, we will share a copy of this recording with you um, once our marketing team is uh, ready to process and post this information to our YouTube channel. And of course, with the attendees attending today. Um, if not, uh, fortunately, we don't have any other topics coming up or workshops coming up in the near future, uh, but do stay tuned or we will be sure to communicate that to you in, uh, once we're ready to resume with these workshops. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy your day and uh, thank you for attending. Bye-bye.